Good morning. It is such an honor to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me to be here at the Arctic Circle Assembly. It's a deep honor to be speaking to every single one of you, people from all over this beautiful planet of ours. Everyone in this room, I believe, is bringing everything we have to the table to work on helping the world's climate situation. What I bring to the table is my concern as a citizen and the mother of two children I love dearly, as well as my skills and perseverance as a technical problem solver, an inventor, and an engineer. I'm here today to discuss an issue of concern to us all, an issue that impacts every person on Earth, especially those who live and work in the Arctic, and which is central to every sustainable development goal we have. The Arctic is melting. We all know it. We've all been talking about it and hearing about it. For 700,000 years, over the entire course of human evolution, our Arctic Ocean's sea ice shield has reflected most of the summertime sun, keeping the northern ocean cool and the northern air cold. It helped establish a stable jet stream that helped keep the northern hemisphere stable, cool, and livable. The jet stream has become a chaotic, looping set of winds devastating the world's historic weather patterns. The resulting heat waves, extreme cold, severe storms, droughts, and fires are widespread, tragic, and ever-increasing. Could you please start the video? You will see here a two-minute video from NASA. I guess you can't hear me if I step away. Um, and this is, um, it starts sort of slow. You're seeing years and months up. Aha, I have a pointer. Years and months up here. You're seeing brightness of sea ice here. What's happening is every winter we refreeze. Open ocean is very dark. First year ice is very thin and not very reflective. Multi-year ice, what we used to have a lot of here up in the Beaufortshire, it's very bright. Notice how much ice flows out past Greenland through the Fram Strait. And notice as the years go along, how each winter when we're regrowing ice in that cold, dark time of year, we're growing less of the multi-year ice because more of the ice has melted and there isn't a foundation of this stable ice that persists year to year to build on. So NASA put this together. It's the best visualization I've seen yet. And what it's showing is that over these last four decades, we have lost most of the reflective ice in the Arctic. Really starts moving here, 2006, 2007, but keep watching. And what you'll see is there's no natural way under current conditions that multi-year ice is going to come back to the Arctic. It's an alarming, it's an alarming thing. So there we go. Um, can you please turn that off and not start the slides quite yet? Um, the risks from this situation are profound and increasing. As the exposed Arctic Ocean absorbs solar heat, the ice melt that was once primarily a consequence of a warming world has become a driver that itself is now increasing the global rate of warming, multiplying by a factor of one and a half the warming we are already experiencing from the increased greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. This is because with the loss of reflective ice in the Arctic, we no longer reflect nearly as much solar energy in the summer, but instead we're absorbing it into a warming ocean, into melting the ice that is left in an accelerating feedback loop. Everyone in this room worries that we will exceed the temperature targets of the Paris Accords. 
Restoring Arctic ice is absolutely necessary to keep the increase to below 2 degrees C and will help considerably with sea level rise as well. If we do nothing, how much will temperature increase above 1.5 degrees C or 2 degrees C or even much more with ever-increasing dire consequences? Every degree matters and every degree is worth fighting for. The particular work we have undertaken now I would like the first slide. Will that happen? Um, first slide, please. The particular work we have undertaken at ICE 911 Research is to rebuild the reflectivity of Arctic sea ice using a surface coating of a simple and safe material in order to develop and test a reversible and safe lever to mitigate climate devastation. This graphic shows how adding a hair's width thickness of a kind of white silica glass sand can make young, young thin ice reflect more like multi-year ice. May we go to the previous slide? I didn't, I think I skipped it perhaps. Summarizing that 95% of the Earth's historic heat shield has gone. We've lost most of the bright reflective sea ice in the Arctic. And that this was a NOAA, um, uh, assessment in their report card in December 2018. Um, please now, uh, no slides. We'll go back to just speaking. We at ICE 911 do all our work with a commitment to first do no harm. The years of small scale laboratory and field testing we've done, always with transparency and permissions, and the expert climate modeling done by our collaborators at Climformatics predict that by treating a small area of Arctic ice, we could rebuild, retain, rebuild reflective ice throughout much of the Arctic. There are no easy answers, but there is prudent insurance that we can put in place of developing governance frameworks and permitting procedures, support and funding for responsibly and openly exploring and testing on a small scale the most promising and realistic options to rebuild the stable climate and thriving ecosystems we need. The relatively small costs of building this urgently needed decision-making and funding framework and doing the small-scale rigorous testing and climate, and climate modeling work it will allow in order to establish, evaluate, and understand the risks and benefits of any of these proposed solutions so that our path forward in climate restoration can be arbitrated by an international and fair-minded body such as the Arctic Council, the UN, or other international collaborations, the cost of this framework and technical development work and adoption will be repaid manyfold in prevention of tragic and widespread climate impacts worldwide. Saving Arctic sea ice appears to be the task that humanity must take on first to stop the acceleration of warming and instability, to give the world time to adopt the rest of the measures needed to stabilize climate, such as decarbonizing our economy and atmosphere. Decarbonization will take more time to fully implement because of the widespread infrastructure changes it will require. In the meantime, we can work to save lives, property, and ecosystems by saving and restoring Arctic ice first, giving needed time for the rest of the hard work on decarbonization to together get us on track for a sustainable future. By urgently prioritizing Arctic restoration work such as this, we can lay the groundwork to avert a future that otherwise may include an ice-free Arctic, global temperature rise of five degrees C or more, the risk of increasing Arctic methane releases, and the tragedies that would come from collapsing ecosystems, leading to untold numbers of climate refugees, life and death battles over necessary resources to survive, and perhaps even endless war. The decisions we need to make, the transitions we need to make in the world's economy and ecosystems will include balancing short-term benefits, such as using the resources in the Arctic uncovered by melting ice, enjoying a temporarily increased prosperity, against the longer-term devastation on our shared future if we do so and continue as we have. As a concerned citizen and mother, I ask your help in developing governance, permitting, and funding frameworks to make these important decisions and priorities, including to starting as, as soon as possible the urgent work needed to restore Arctic sea ice and start the work on decarbonization to move us toward the sustainable future humanity needs 
for the sake of every living being on earth. Thank you.